Hello, my name is Charlie Evans, and I'm a software developer on the Call for Code team at IBM. Today, I want to talk to you about IBM Cloud Functions. IBM Cloud Functions are a function as a service offering uh, that allows developers to run snippets of code to perform single tasks without having to worry about uh, creating or maintaining any infrastructure. IBM Cloud Functions are based on an open source project called Apache OpenWhisk. With functions, you can only pay for the resources that you use, which means no excess capacity or idle time. Uh, cloud functions can be scaled to meet your needs and demands and is capable of running either as one time every so often or up to thousands of parallel requests per second. So today I'm gonna to show you how to create a cloud function and work with it. So from the IBM Cloud dashboard here, you can open up your menu on the left and click functions. And you can click on actions over here on the left. Now to create your first action, uh, you do need to create a namespace first and you should get a pop-up screen for that. Uh, and this is what it looks like here. So you'll give it a name, you'll pick a resource group. Um, if you have one that you wanna put it in other than the default, you'll wanna pick a location uh, that you want to run this in. And here are the different options available. And then you can give it a description and then you'll create. Once you create your namespace, you'll be presented with this screen to create your first action. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna give it a name. We're gonna call it something like, um, you know, Node.js demo. You can create an enclosing package by cl clicking this create package button. I'm not gonna do that today, but that is an option available. And then here you can pick your runtime. So there are a few runtimes that are offered uh, out of the box here. As you can see, we have Node.js, Python, Ruby, Swift, PHP, and Go. You can run any code that you want by creating a Docker container and uploading a Docker container instead. But today we're just gonna focus on Node.js. We'll create that. And you can see here we have a function. So there's a few things, at least with Node.js, that you have to keep in mind. The first thing is your function should be called main. If you want it to be called something other than main, then there is a different process for uploading your code. Uh, we won't cover that today, but you would package it up in a zip and you would upload it. Uh, cloud functions have a single parameter. In this case, it must be a JSON object and we call it params. And then your return should also be a JSON object and it can be, you can put in whatever you want for here. So you can see with the code we have here, we have, you know, main, we have our params, and then we're returning a JSON object with a message that says, hello world. So this function will run right out of the box. So we'll just go ahead and invoke it by clicking invoke over here. And you can see that our results were, we got a message that says, hello world, which is exactly what we returned. Now, if you want to make use of parameters, it's pretty simple to do. So we're just gonna make a quick code change here. We're gonna use something called JavaScript string interpolation to just input the parameter here in line with the text. And I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna look for a parameter called name and that's it. We need to save it, so we'll save. Now, if I just invoke this function here, it'll still run, but we'll actually get a hello undefined. And that's because we specified the name parameter here that we wanted to look for, but we didn't actually pass in a parameter. So from the interface here, we can invoke with parameters by clicking this invoke with parameters button. And again, because it expects a JSON object, we need to provide a JSON object. So I'm gonna create a parameter called name and I'm going to put my name in here. And then I'm going to click apply and now when you invoke this, it will pass in your parameter and you can see now it says, hello, Charlie Evans. Perfect. So this is great because you have a function that runs and you didn't have to do anything other than write some code, right? But what if you want to call this like a REST API, for example? Um, that's actually very easy to set up. What you will do here is on your function over here on the left, you can click on endpoints. And this checkbox here, it says enable as a web action. And it gives you some information about how web actions work. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna save. Now, when we do that, you can see here that we get a URL that we can call this with. So I'm gonna copy that URL 
and I'm just going to open another browser tab and we're going to paste that in there. Now, one thing with a Node.js version is you need, you do need to put .json on the end of that. So we'll do that now. And you can see here that uh, I called it without a parameter, right? And we got our hello undefined like we had seen earlier. So we'll put in our parameter called name and we're going to call it Charlie Evans. And you can see now with my parameter that I got hello Charlie Evans. That's great. You can also call this from an application. You can use a tool like Postman to test this as well and it will work the same. Uh, there are also capabilities where you can create um, IAM tokens to provide a level of authentication in case you want it to be publicly accessible, but you want to have some sort of authentication. Let's say that you have a function that is manipulating items in a database. You, you don't want anybody to be able to do that, so you can add authentication capabilities here. Uh, you can also set up actions to um, uh, run on different triggers. So if you have another IBM cloud service that sends out some sort of event pattern, you can actually connect it here to uh, respond to when that event fires and then it will do, you know, whatever your code does. So that was a very quick look at how IBM cloud functions work and how you can get started very easily. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Slack and I would be happy to help. Thank you and have a wonderful day.